Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, long journey, as soon as you think you've gotten to a, a plateau, there's another plateau above that. It's uh, very humiliating. Uh, you have to proceed in that manner, uh, understanding that there's always somebody better, more technical, faster, stronger, all that. It's a, it's a wonderful journey. I highly recommend it. Uh, this is uh, Verde Valley Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instructor Stefan Dahlstedt and Jesse Teague and my buddy Tim White. Yeah. This gives me, this gives me the leverage to face you mm -hmm. and bring my knees up. Okay. Mm. Right. Yeah. So that's, a, that's, a, that's an awful position. Yeah. Because yeah. I've got everything here. Right. Oxygen in the brain is important for creativity and productivity and just being aware and in your skin. Being in the wine industry or being on the mat, you have to be conscious and present for that to be a successful endeavor you can't phone it in. You can't really cut corners for it to be, for the wine, the vineyard suffers if you're not present, right? Same thing on the mat. If you're snoozing, there's somebody that's gonna put you to sleep. Verde Valley Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you're walking in the door as a white belt, you don't know anything. So every day that you go there, even though you might make some small uh, progressions, it's about you really digging in and self-evaluating and understanding exactly what humility smells like because that's it's a tough road uh, from white belt to black belt it's a long road and it requires you nobody else can do that but you you have to put the time in you have to progress you have to do it no one can do it for you if you have that belt by the time you get to a black belt you've you've earned it there's no there's no shortcuts my father was my wrestling coach in high school. Um, solid coach, taught me a lot. My father expects a lot when it came to coaching. He expected, because he, he knew that you had more in you than you were giving as a high school student. That's just the nature of high school students, right? But his take was always, you either win or you learn. So you go on that mat, you're on your own, and you maybe you won. But if you didn't win, what did you learn? Down a little bit, just down, just to kind of get rid of the V. Just go like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. V. Oh, it's Adam's apple. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Come down. Yeah. And then just turn your wrists out. Good. Yeah. <coughs> okay. In a career. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you didn't learn anything, then you lost. So you either win or you learn on that mat. I discovered jiu-jitsu through uh, Tim Alexander, drummer for Primus. He showed me the tapes of the early UFCs. And I found a gym near me, uh, Hicks and Gracie's gym down on Pico, uh, mid to late 90s is when I found that place. And I dug in and I just wanted to learn. Having grown up a wrestler, with my dad, um, and that was a that was a skill set that I had a foundation in. So I felt like this is something that I can I can learn. Of course, we walk in the door as a wrestler, and a lot of that stuff is absolutely not applicable. So you're <laughs> completely like, oh, I got this, and they're like, I'm, How long was I out? <laughs> That's already there. Yeah. That's right there. Because okay. what you've done is you come here, mm -hmm. and all you got to do is point your thumb, turn your wrist that way. Yep. And you're like, no, no. Yep. So, okay. Yep. That's it. Yep. It's just this. I need to practice that a lot. Yeah. That was the, that was the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'll see when you hit it right on these guys. Yeah. And if you go slow. Yeah. If you go fast, they're panicking. They're trying to get out. Right. If you're like, oh. You're looking at something, yeah, yeah. and you're doing this, they're like... <laughs> and then you draw dicks on their forehead. Yep. When you look at something like the USC uh, 
you, you have to understand that the people that are operating in that circle, they are extremely gifted, world-class athletes. Anybody that's you know a top-level boxer, a top-level MMA guy, their body in some way is you know, far above and beyond your average person who, you know, who, who does martial arts. Your, whatever. You have your, like, comb in your, comb in your hair. Comb in your hair. And I hit it. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not living any illusions. I will never be in the octagon. That's not. I'm not built for it. What I do martial arts for is, is multiple things. Just uh, personal growth, and personal understanding and reflection. Um, but also because it's a self-defense technique. Uh, the, the idea of any self-defense you know, martial art is that maybe it'll never happen, but if you're in a situation where you end up having some drunken, blithering idiot or somebody's crazy, so I, I do it for that, re that purpose. But the, the chess part of it on the mat, in the gi, is very mentally stimulating. It's step by step. If you watch some of the top level black belt guys competing, it's it's half inches. They're moving, they're making adjustments that are half inches and you're watching them try to out chess each other like six moves ahead to shut off where the guy's heading for the checkmate. It really is that gorgeous to watch. Boring for a you know, a stadium full of USC people watching it. But for people who understand the art and watch that, watch those those quarter inches and half inches go by, it's 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 pretty, it's amazing chess. I've seen a lot of my friends, you know, and peers, or they get successful in a thing, and they think that because they're they're successful because of this element or this thing that happened, and that's why I'm successful, I did that. When a lot of it could just be circumstance, it's just accidental. A million variables came together and, and put you in this position where you're successful. Um, and then they, you know, they drive their stake in the ground, they go, I know what I'm doing. Well, as soon as you say that you know what you're doing and you're convinced that you know what you're doing, you're, you're dead. You have to be, you have to grow. Life is absolute change and chaos. And you have to be adaptable. And I think something that's really important to point out to people is if you're an artist and you're going to be writing songs, making wine, uh, photography, filmmaking, painting, uh, whatever that is, do what feels right to you. Do a, Follow a combination of your head and your heart. Like your, your intuition is important. Your experience is almost as important, if not more. Um, that balance of, of actual hard work understanding the, using your experiences to move forward with that art but understand that you are f on your fucking own you are alone do what makes you feel like you're successful or at least setting up the next level of okay i've reached that understanding now let's go to the next level big fan of chris cornell when was the last time this did you think about chris cornell this week i didn't i love the guy um alan rickman david bowie you know was <laughs> It's you know there's a bunch of posts on Facebook and then you go about you go about your way. So that's what's going to happen to you. By the way, people are going to be upset that you're gone and then they're going to move the fuck on with their lives. So be happy with what your decisions are. You are on your own. You don't owe anybody anything. Um, but if you're doing your job and you're doing it accurately enough and you're expressing from the heart, from the core, from your experiences and your intuition. Other people are going to resonate with that. It's going to resonate with them. They're going to get something out of it. Their day might go better uh, because of what your, your true, honest approach to what you're doing. You're going to help other people. You're going to help yourself. You're going to help your family. But just understand at the end of the day, nobody owes you as an artist any kind of accolades. You don't owe them anything. They don't owe you anything. You're just doing. <laughs>
So when Travis gets here, he doesn't know we're going to put him on the mat. Okay. And, and, and we're going to tell him that we've changed uniforms to a tutu. And he's going to go to sleep. In a diaper. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get him out of here. Okay. And we're going to come out of the dressing room in actual keys. And he's going to go, what the fuck? Before he has any chance to really <laughs> respond. Night-night. Night-night him. Yeah. Drop dicks on his forehead. Tie his shoes together. Okay. And leave. 